coach, how much does the talk about your job security bother you? Yeah, I'll just do it the best I can every day. Bill, Robert Kraft was on NFL Network for the game. Uh, he talked about the season. He said it's been really disappointing and I hope things would be better. Are those sentiments he's expressed to you directly? Yeah, I think we all feel that way. I think we're all disappointed in the season. But we'll keep going here. We've got seven games to go. I'll be ready to go next week against the Giants. Yeah. So, yeah, go yeah, ahead. That's, that's what he's going to do, and that's what he should do. I mean, even I don't want to see any change in him. I don't want to, I want to continue to see him to coach his players relentlessly like he usually does, and even his coaches. That's the only thing he knows. I don't think – I really see – I mean, there are good plans out there defensively, okay, that I wouldn't recognize every single week when you miss on the quarterback, guys. Oof. And the quarterback is playing like the way it is, and the offense just isn't producing – it affects the entire team. I, I mean, I, I had the luxury of looking at quarterbacks in my career, like I drew Bledsoe, and then Tom Brady comes in, and you just get inspired by the quarterback position. That's the, sort of the intangible that, that it is. And to see Mac play this way from the, from the sideline as a defender, it's like, what are we doing? And what more do I have to do? So Bill, Billy O'Brien, all of these guys, Gerard Mayo, they're all coaching their butts off in there, and they just have to and finish this thing out. Danny, give me some tape. I mean, w why has Mac Jones regressed the way yeah, that he has? Yeah, his feet, and it's kind of something that is just – it's gotten worse in the regression of it. The feet are very rarely ever set. Like, look, watch this interception. I mean, we're oh. fading away and throwing it. And I understand. Listen, the offensive line is awful. I said this. I think it's the worst offensive line in the last three or four years in the NFL. But see his feet and how everything's fading away? We, like, that's why. And some guys can do this. You know, we, we know there's some talented quarterbacks that can do that. Mac is not one. And so that has been something that is it's, it, it's every single week it's gotten worse and worse and worse. And I, I do want to be clear with this. It's easy to say. It's easy to say stand in there and take the – but it's a reality. You know, I know it's hard to do, but it's a reality. And that has, like, the regression is shocking to see. And in part, it's because of the offensive line, but he's got to control what he can control. Look, man, I mean, and it's never a personal thing. I just give my opinion. I don't know this young man from anybody, but he's not an NFL quarterback. He lacks the arm talent. Here's the other thing. Anytime the guy extends plays, which is what you got to do in today's game, you have he's to be able awful. To do that. He's yeah. absolutely atrocious. What I, the worst part about this game to me, he takes four sacks on third down. Mm. What are you doing? This guy, in a, what, can I prove that he's got no arm? Yeah. That NFL arm talent? He averages 4.3 yards past the line of scrimmage, all right, on his pass attempts. Uh, that'd be 32nd in the league. Line he, 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 no, but it, it is awful, but he completed 15 passes. Good I mean, for you. You take four sacks on third down, all right? You're, all you're doing is hitting the checkdowns because that's all he can throw. Anything where he's got to push the ball down and feel he struggles, it's never personal. I'm telling you right now, the guy couldn't play. I said it four years ago. So what, and I, so I what all people it. in New England are looking at is all they're looking at now is draft position yeah. and who they can yeah. get as a quarterback. And the big question is that, Will Mr. Kraft let Bill develop a young quarterback? That's the thing. Bill's now past yeah. 70 years old. Yeah. He said he wouldn't be coaching past 70 years old. He is. Can he still coach? I believe he can. But do you let him start all over? You know, when you get the quarterback, yeah. if you do want to. Well, I think draft. he should. Because, look, he is still the best football coach in America. That's my opinion. Of the past couple years. This is one of the best plays of his in the past couple years. Goes to get in the pocket. Suddenly goes back. <laughs> he's throwing that ball. I see you, Zach. Off one leg. From the 38-yard line all the way across the field to the 11-yard line, that ball goes 30-plus yards in the air. That's a big-time play. And then down in the red zone, third and nine, they're playing man coverage. Defense has all got their backs turned to them because that's what happens in man. And then this is the way that you counter that. There's a little bit of hold right there on Thibodeau. But I think that is, like, the biggest development. Yesterday's game, obviously, a, a unmatched opponent. But the, the continued use of Dak's legs, mm. and Teddy brought up the point before. It's four or five times a game. That's it. He's not That's Jalen Hurts. Yeah. This isn't Lamar Jackson, but the four or five times a game where you could break a defense's back yep. on third down or get yourself out of bad situations in some of the design stuff, I do think that's a different version of Dak over the past couple of years. Tough. The Dallas Cowboys are a tough team to figure out. All right. I don't know the mentality they had last night in terms of playing loose, playing free. You get to a point where you've won enough games as, as a team and you play that way all the time. Yeah. No matter who you play. 
I just don't think they're there. They recognize the opponent they play, mm -hmm. all right? Because it's not, you play one way every single time no matter who the other team is. It's all about you, right? It's easy to say, but when you get out there and you see the Eagles and you see the Niners and you see the Giants, you play differently. I see that with these guys. Mm -hmm. I want to see them play that way, play loose, plays free, no matter who it is. Well, Rex, like me, is one of those geniuses who will not be fully appreciated until long after their time. Right. What are the two things you said two months ago the Cowboys needed to do that they are now doing that contributed to this route? Using Dak's legs, especially in the red zone like he did earlier in his, in his uh, playing career, uh, we can check that box. Oh, by the way, is Brandon Cooks on their team? He is. He's on the roster. I, I don't know. There was somebody here. I don't know who it was that called for Brandon Cooks. It was me. That's right? your, I think it was Drew. <laughs> That's the second best receiving option on that football team. Yep. Uh, by the way, 180 yards receiving and things like that. So, yes, they found it. I'm going to tell you, this might still be the biggest threat outside of Detroit to the Philadelphia Eagles. Brandon Cooks has been nice. L let me say this. Dak Prescott to CeeDee Lamb has probably become a top six QBR, QB to a wide receiver sure. duo right yeah. now Absolutely. in the NFL. Yeah. That's a huge part of their offense's growth. But very but quickly, the second option. Teddy, oh. why do your notes say you learned nothing about the Cowboys yesterday? Because the New York Giants are statistics skewers, really. And they just and they skew the statistics when you play the Giants twice or you play them once. I mean, it's like, okay, we've got this many sacks. We're the best pass rushing team in the league. We could do this offensively. Did you play the Giants? That's how bad the team in New York is. What are we calling them now? I'm calling them the little Giants. Who's Icebox? Uh, and I'm just saying because right skew now. in the stats. Here's the thing. See, I think we discredit that, that performance by Dallas a little bit. 640 offensive yards? Yeah. 640 yards. You can't dismiss it. Well, I mean, or maybe you can. One way or another, the Giants you guys really I struggling. All right, these defenses, he's just been ridiculous. These last two games, let me show you the numbers. 800 yards, seven total touchdowns, and the betting world is taking notice. Uh, the odds right now at ESPN Bet are 100 to 1 four days ago. As of yesterday, those odds are now 30 to 1, 10th best in the league ahead of Dak Prescott and Tyreek Hill and A.J. Brown. And, and, and right now, Rex, does he belong? He's the rookie. He's the rookie of the year, and that's not even close. Right. Does he belong in the MVP conversation? See, I don't think so. And, and the reason I say that right now, generally, that goes to uh, 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 the player on the best team. Right. Or close but to the best But it doesn't have team. to. It could go uh, to the player who has made the biggest difference to his team, well, to a team that was otherwise awful and is now in a division race. I, I, I understand that. Look, this, this young man changed the entire franchise. There's no in question about it. When he came in there, changed everything about this franchise. However, the MVP, in my opinion, generally goes to the guy that's the face of the National Football League. I don't think he's there yet. But he sure certainly may be at one Or the face of one of the best teams in the league. I'd like to see the Houston Texans creep above the Jacksonville Jaguars in the divisional race. And then all of a sudden, you're talking about a team that's absolutely a playoff contender that can contend for a championship. And now you're talking, all right, who are the MVPs on that? Because right now, right now, I mean, this is possibly a non-quarterback MVP race. Yeah. Best team with the best record, the Philadelphia Eagles. A.J. Brown, who's playing so well. Okay, there's yeah. other receivers like a Tyree Kill. So... Let, let me see you guys win a few more games before I get That there. said, I, I like what he just said. Changing the franchise. It reminds you of Burrow, right? The Bengals oh, were a laughing stock. And then, boom, in comes Burrow and no longer. Is Stroud having that impact? It's the middle of November, and we're talking about the team that had the number two pick as a potential playoff contender. We're talking about a team who had the number two pick as a potential division winner. Yeah. Absolutely. In two months, he has changed the trajectory and the expectation for the Houston Texans. It was, can't, did they get the right guy to, we, we, could, we could be a playoff football team within the first season. It, it, it's when not it, overstating. When MVP it. voters vote, they yeah. vote for five. Okay. okay, they vote yeah. for five. Could he be maybe fourth or fifth starting to creep into that conversation? He could get a nod. We'll find out. Let's see where they go.